hundred percent. Music, music. One hundred percent. Music, music. One hundred percent music. Music. One hundred percent music. 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 Great theme song. Isaac, for the win on that one. One of the best songs I've ever written here. What what do you call that? I call that 100% music as we uh, launch into episode one of 100% music. We are four-fifths of the band Hembry. We, um, for the longest time, have been YouTube guys, infamously so. Hey, YouTubers. Super famous on YouTube. Super famous. Um, I, I must say YouTube is dead to us now. We are Twitch through and through that said we'll be posting this on youtube <laughs> yeah. twitch um, coming days twitch directly reached out to us and said hey you guys have some personality charming young young men you deserve your own show all the twitch scouts are out, there. out there and if you're you wondering recruited if you've heard of them they're out there they're looking for people they're looking for talent at twitch.tv and they found uh i think they they're really investing in something big here and then at first we were like, oh, is this because we're, we're really good at Warzone and Call of Duty and video games in general? No and games. They're like, no, do not play any games on your on your Twitch show. Please do not play any games. I guess we're not that good at the games. <laughs> That's true. If you're tuning in for what tra- traditionally Twitch is known for, a lot of video game playing, you're not going to see that here on the Hembry Music channel. There's some 13-year-olds who are just way better than us. We're coming to you live from the carport here in sunny, beautiful Los Angeles, California. Maybe too sunny right Maybe now. Maybe too that's sunny. That's a little Woo. scalding. California sun beating down on the band Hembry. Well, yeah, they approached us here to start this 100% music podcast, and, uh, you know, we love just chatting and hanging out. We thought we'd start, you know, bringing guests on. We have a lot of cool friends, cooler than us, you know, people that we could really bring, a community we could really build, because they said, what do you guys want to do? And we said, well, we have this concept for... Four to five, if Garrett's around. Four to five dudes standing around talking. And, and it'll be a podcast. It's a show about nothing. It's a show about nothing. And they said yes. That's a big breakthrough for us here at, at Hembry Music our LLC. Man, our man on the ground, RJ, just informed me that uh, there were reports of really bad Instagram Live going right now. I realized I started Instagram Live and never turned it off, so it was just filming the bottom of the chair. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> going off without a hitch. If you yeah. could have seen what was going on before we switched over to Live, the, the mad scramble of wires and stuff. <laughs> streaming well, about, issues about 30 <laughs> seconds before we went live here we said oh we should also go live on instagram you can't go live on instagram in 30 seconds no. let me tell you you need a little more prep time than that we've never done it in three years let alone in, in 30 <laughs> seconds we're taking risks though and i'm proud of us for it you know we've tried everything as a band to really you know build the big massive following except for use the internet yeah. so uh, we're trying the internet these days guys yeah uh, Social speaking of big developments hard. eric did you have a celebrity sighting recently? <laughs> let's start with, let's kick us <laughs> off with celebrity let's sightings. Let's get in the hot goss now that hot we're all out in Los Angeles. Goss. Speaking of which, yeah. where is, uh, we are missing one man. One man. We're one man down. Mr. Where's Garrett. Uh, Bring him in. Oh! oh! Garrett, Garrett. Has, a, Garrett has a prior mm. engagement this evening. He is playing acoustic songs at a country club. He's gone solo on us. Yeah. He's that making the big bucks. Awesome. Corporate and solo. Eric, tell us about this yeah. celebrity sighting. So this is great. So yeah, four out of five of us are in LA. I am the newest uh, Angelino here. I moved out here almost a year ago in yeah, so in June a year, and it is great. You know, I've had a few celebrity sightings. I really feel like I I, I live in this city because I'm starting to like run into people I know. That seems like crazier to me than running into a celebrity here. That's really cool to me. It's but a small I had town. but I had one. What was that? It was only uh, yesterday. That really was just incredible. I'm on. Um, I'm in Los Feliz. I'm, I'm stuck in traffic on Los Feliz Boulevard, and it is just jammed, and nobody can get through except for one man, and that is Jack Black is flying down the sidewalk in a moped. That is fantastic. Yeah. He's yeah. on, on the I sidewalk. I you're not supposed to do that. First no, of all. Highly you know he can do whatever the hell he wants to do. And there is just no Sizer. doubt. The king of Los Files. Was yeah, it a, a rental moped, like like an Uber Lime no, kind of thing? No, it, it, it looked like a one that he probably owned. It had cool. some wear and tear on it. But yeah, he was just, so that was a really, really cool one. Because yeah, just the beard flying everywhere. Just like, there's just no doubt in your mind who it is. There's nobody in the world who looks like that man. 
nobody and nobody else allowed to drive a moped on the sidewalk. Oh, who's stopping him? No. I'm surprised people weren't like applauding. <laughs> I right. would have. Yeah, it was it was absolutely incredible, amazing, uh, amazing Los Angeles moment. Stars are just like us. Just like us. I will say, out of uh, that, uh, the big Super Mario Brothers campaign, the only one who looked like they were having fun on the campaign trail was Jack Black. He would dress up as as King Koopa for all the events and the press, and it looked like he was genuinely excited well, to be he's there. Well, he's not. He's not stuck in traffic. Yeah, true. So he's that's not getting him down there. He's beating LA traffic. He's got all his energy. They're sitting in their limos, stuck for 30 minutes. It's He's like, flying down the moped. <laughs> Austin and I had a great celebrity sighting the other day. We went to the Just Like Heaven musical music festival. Musical. Musical. Yeah. <laughs> musical. It was a musical's coming next it year. It was a Broadway performance. Just Like Heaven musical. And I'm, I'm walking through the crowd, and I'm just by myself at this point, um, trying to get, long story, I was trying to get to a band. I ended up missing them. Anyway, I see a man walking through the, walking through the audience. I was like, That's a, you're not going to miss this guy. That's Jonah Hill. Mm. So I immediately started texting everybody. Start texting Jonah. What up, dude? I'm behind you. Yesterday, uh, Austin and I were at another concert, and Austin said, oh, my God, that's Jonah Hill over there. I go, yeah, that's the, that's the guy I saw. And if, it's not Jonah Hill. Definitely. He's just a guy who looks unfortunately. <sighs> no, no, not unfortunately, but very much like. Hey, Jonah, you look great. No, yeah, he looks Jonah great. Looks I mean, great. unfortunately, in that everybody thinks he's Jonah Hill. Mm. Poor dude. He could turn it into a career. He could. He could. I uh, went to a friend's wedding, and uh, they had Austin Powers MC an Austin Powers impersonator MC the reception and uh, the guy looked exactly like Austin Powers I've seen this guy yeah. on Instagram he's, he's a real character and he will not break Austin Powers uh, so they the whole reception did the and they did the whole dance and everything oh, it was fantastic. magical yeah what would Jonah Hill's gag be if he was to like <laughs> MC like that that's be like act like scenes from like super bad or something he would have like to do that. Super bad. Right? Oh yeah, that'd be more fun than like if he just did money money ball. ball. Yeah, yeah, money ball. Yeah, he could he could trade some of the wedding mm-hmm. guests or something. I like that. Trade yeah. out your wedding guests. <laughs> We're full of ideas here, and now it's yeah. it's coming clear why Twitch wanted us to do yeah. this. So far, none of this is on our outline, so we're yeah. doing right. great. Uh, we did buy a we bought a whiteboard for this. We can all see it off in the distance. I no. wish we could get that on camera because it is a uh, it's a sight to behold. But can we haven't stuck to a single distance. one of the, the put, points yet. We put it on the band oh, no. fund too. Jack Black. Oh, we did get Jack Black. Jack we just Black, have a right there, point. right there. I got it. See, just like just like heaven. We did say just like heaven. Just like Heaven Musical. Guys, we're doing great. <laughs> how was it? Who was the who's how were the hives? Did you see the hives? Well, let me uh, tell no, you. That's, like, that's the that, artist. That's, uh, they played at twelve thirty. Yeah, that, that makes no sense. They they were filling mm. in for a band that's I think a little you know smaller popularity wise, so they filled in at twelve thirty. We tried our darndest to get there, but it's impossible I would pitch this to one, get to a big festival by twelve thirty. One hundred percent. And I would pitch this to the music. to the viewers. What kind of a festival goer you are? Because uh, I go for the music, and to come to find out, not a lot of people go for the music. They go to they go for the to be seen, for to the stand gram. in lines, to 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 booze. And I was on a mission, and I kind of abandoned the group from time to time to try when and get you say to the group. You mean your girlfriend? You <laughs> your girlfriend into the crowd, and then just took off with Jonah Hill. To go she see understood. The hives. She understands what it's like when I go to a, when I go to a concert. Yeah. But we missed the hives. Almost missed the entirety of the faint. Oh, Ooh, Omaha, yeah. Nebraska. The faint was on the bill. They were How on? did they pull these five-minute changeovers? Uh, it okay. was remarkable. Yeah, this is actually a topical question. Because this is 100% music. This is 100% music, and that is a great question. Not only did this festival have five-minute uh, minute changeovers, but there was a this past weekend was also a big festival in Las Vegas that I was really sad to miss called Sick. Sad no, it's cruel, Wor- cruel world fest. No, that's a different fest. Oh, that's coming this up. This was sick, sad world. I don't know. It was new metal. It was Soulfly. Oh, I saw Corn was on the bill. Was Korn. System of the Down was the headliner. Would have been sick oh, to see them. Sick. But they also ran a stage that had five minute changeovers. And I'm reading that like there's no way as a, as bands that have played festivals, it's that's nearly impossible. Let me tell you how they do it because they do do it. They build everything. They now have rotating full stages, a 360 oh. rotating stage. So when uh, MGMT got done with their set, five minutes later, the stage literally rotated. The Why did they never stage. do that? And until then on now. the other side was yeah yeah yeahs, boom, ready to time. go. The other thing that they're on doing, time. and again, awesome. Tell everybody who was at just like Heaven Fest real quick. Give them a rundown of this going, lineup. Going backwards, headliner yeah yeah yeahs, absolutely incredible. They were they were insanely good. MGMT played the big album, Oracular Spectacular, and it, then before them was Future Islands. Absolutely murdered it as always. They are always always incredible. Hot uh, Chip was prior Hot to that. Hot Chip was was amazing. We also got Metronomy, which we're big fans of. They crushed it. We also got uh, Peaches. We got 
uh, Caribou. We got one song from The Faint. One song. So from we only one did song? one song. I, guess I saw right. well. We got their late. Was this got Purple late. Rain? Oh. Yeah, they just did Purple Rain. <laughs> their version of the it. The geeks were right. The other yeah. thing that I noticed, and this is a, a in-depth band conversation. Perhaps we should say for another other another pod. Every band was running direct. All like amp emulators, you know, Axe, Fractal, and there were no amps on stage for almost any of the bands. It so everybody was just, change over. Oh, 100%. They just literally walk on yeah. stage, their chords are going off the stage into some, you know, a who box. knows? Mystery a, box. Some random box. Hey, can we uh, just take a moment to shout out all the music production people who work on these festivals? Oh, like, 100%. that rotating stage of things, these guys are absolutely incredible. Yeah. 100% music people. It's for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. There was yeah. only one band at the festival that I, at least that I saw, call out and thank the crew, and it was Future Islands. Hey, at yeah, the beginning, he Pro went, move. thanked everyone there in the crowd. He thanked all the crew, thanked the sound guy. Pro move. Those Pro guys move. are there so early. Guys and gals, they leave there so late. And they are just, yeah, this for a festival like that, it's just five-minute changeovers. Like, they are, like, truly, I'm in and awe we've seen of the it. things they we've can do. We've seen it yeah. firsthand, ladies and gentlemen. It's happening out here in L.A. That was the reason, yeah. also, just like Heaven Fest was, was a great experience, but I must say I felt a little spoiled after last summer as many festivals as Hembry so participated many, so in many and the VIP ones. treatment it was a little tough of a come down to hang out with the commoners on the ground it's just like this time around it is I actually me and my girlfriend went up to purchase a VIP ticket at the fest because I just couldn't handle being out in the main crowd <laughs> area it was so hot there's no good clean bathrooms Went up to the VIP. It was an additional two hundred dollars a person to get to the VIP level, which even then you not get free drinks or anything. So we passed. We passed. Oh. On that. If the VIPs knew what was in the artist lounge, they would be <laughs> losing their minds. I'm talking clean amenities. I'm talking, talking hummus, okay Modelo, <laughs> OK catering, hummus, turkey Yeesh. wraps, a vegetable tray. Hon sometimes, honestly, things that uh, you know. You could get people say, "What's it like to be in a band?" You could go to the grocery store and get all this on your own, for yeah, sure. sure, without a doubt. Great festival, great experience, and it gets me excited for uh, our upcoming summer shows. Oh, uh, that great transition! Uh, wow, it's a good yeah. segue. Going back home to kick things off this summer, we're going to St. Louis, a little place called Blueberry Hill. Uh, we're just going to do the first three dates because anytime you start re reciting every tour date, I mean, I know you guys are tuning out. So we're going Blueberry Hill, St. Louis. Always have a, have a good time at the Blueberry Hill. I really hope the owner sees this. I want a picture with this guy so that we can be on the wall at Blueberry Hill. I think it's the keys to the music industry. Yeah, this place is incredible. The owner of this venue has a picture, pictures on the wall of almost any famous musician you could ever think of there's a picture of them on the wall up there it's a really cool it's like a diner upstairs and the venue is downstairs we always have a great great time playing and we're there performing and we're so the, excited to be back performing the in the room. duck room famous yep. for yep. ducks go on tell them about all the ducks that <laughs> everyone there. that works down there is a duck and that's what's been crazy about playing down there uh chuck berry chuck berry but i, I the will original say duck <laughs> our uh, <laughs> stage walk. banner usually mm -hmm. consists of just duck jokes on stage at the duck room they love us there they love it yeah, they had us. I back. do love a venue that's got photos on the wall. It reminds me yeah. of the bottleneck in Lawrence, Kansas, infamous yeah. for its. Uh, however, they remodeled. Are they still there? The photos. The I photos, haven't been I, there. I since believe they, they've kept the photos. Okay, that's great. They gotta have the photos there. I love the little press shots of all the bands who've performed. Especially. One of one of our band dreams is to have our photo up there, and so I think we just take it in the and hang bottleneck. it. Bottleneck, yeah. yeah. Listen, Mike, you're watching. I know you're out there. We're gonna put a picture of us in the bottleneck. We've played. In our collective bands, we've played that room hundreds of times. Yep. So somebody stop me. <laughs> yeah, we got to get in the bottleneck. First the bottleneck, <laughs> then we're going to get our picture in uh, in Blueberry Hill. So, yeah, priorities. Yep. All yep, right, yep, what do we, what do we got next, Isaac? Let's get back to cussing. Oh, <laughs> feels so good. Uh, we, uh, after that, we're going to keep it brief. We're just rolling into Boulevardia, hometown, Kansas City. We like it. We love it. We're coming back. We didn't think they'd have us back two years in a row, but apparently it was that good, folks. I think we. <laughs> I think it's safe to say we crushed it last Early year. Tier. How could they not we invite just us back? Decided, we just decided we were that good. They brought us back. We decided. Early they year. didn't actually send a confirmation we were playing, but we are showing up. <laughs> yeah, at, we're, we're not on the bill. We're just showing up. That's how we roll. And uh, then after that, we are. Oh, sorry. The night before that is the Brickyard in Wichita, Kansas. You Don't forgot sleep the on Brickyard? Wichita. Don't sleep on the Big W, which apparently no one calls it that. But what's the uh, fantastic little coffee shop in Wichita? Ooh. Reverie Coffee Reveries. Roasters. Reverie Coffee mm, Roasters. Delicious. Always a highlight. We'll That's be jacked up on coffee in Wichita. 
Yes. Guaranteed. I've seen Eric jacked on coffee to the max. Oh, yeah. And um, it's those set lists are going to be looking shaky. Yep. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Another good segue there because the set list is going to consist of some new material. Yes. Ooh, are we given a new song? I think we will already? in just a moment. I got to figure out the audio situation. For yeah, it, we're anyway. learning here, folks. <laughs> but we're back. We're back on the road, which is is good. Last winter, we nearly, uh, well, we nearly didn't make it. Uh, we were so <laughs> exhausted and sick, and Austin lost a tooth. Yeah, this is true. Austin, you want to talk a That's little bit like about that? That's like the first or? serious thing you've actually said. I think people maybe think that Isaac's joking. Oh, this but, is true, but yeah. But that is 100% I like when, true. We, when people are like, oh, they're going to tell tour, like wild tour stories. It's Eric drank too much coffee, <laughs> and then Austin <laughs> lost a tooth and had real bad health. <laughs> for, for, the, for the last several months. Yeah. Uh, but no, this is true. Yeah, we did a, we did a, run, uh, a run last October with uh, a great band that we're now very good friends with called Argonaut and the Wasp. Uh, became very good buds very close on that trip and half of us uh got a little sick myself got very sick uh, i had some tooth issues that became a i had to get an emergency root canal in kansas city i had a i lost a tooth in wyoming where were we on that one yeah so we were in wyoming, wyoming? at basically a town that was nothing but a post office it was a yeah. post office yeah. and a little flea market antique store i'm gonna find the name i got the name of the town that on my happened phone to have one of the best hamburgers i've ever had in my life it was these two folks that they lived in the restaurant which was so i don't know if that's a house or a restaurant I suppose. <laughs> it's more of a house with with a working stove you know, like an olive garden and stuff they're yeah. like it's your fan when you hear your family like this is true like this is this their is home li- no this is our house. elk mountain wyoming elk yes. mountain wyoming it's yeah, a, yeah. it is a magical place though it really was cool uh no i had just had a, a, a emergency root canal like two days prior in kansas city on tour now we're in driving through Wyoming. We're eating this amazing burger in the small town. And what do you know? The whole tooth just falls out in the burger. So then I'm just full on, just there's straight Jimbo. up. Oh, Jimbo on the screen? Yeah, Jimbo's on the screen now. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's Jimbo. Yeah, yeah. See, there was an elk watch. See, we're not making anything up. This is real life. This is 100% music, 100%, people. Yeah, 100% real truth. Life. Tell them how quickly it... <laughs> It went downhill from there. Well, so yeah, so I lost the tooth. I, I on this run, I think I went to a total of six different dentists throughout the whole three week run. So then I go to a dentist in I think Salt Lake City. I get a tooth wherever we were. Then I go get a, a temporary tooth in another city. And then lo and behold, the tooth uh, becomes abscess, which an abscess tooth is very bad. Uh, and so when we're leaving, I think it was Seattle. My whole face swelled up. Which we have photos of that, but I I don't think we're, we're going to show those. those on next the pod, yeah. no the next, next pod. pod, and and I remember I have a vivid memory of walking into the green room, and Austin and his girlfriend Emma were in there, and, and oh, you guys probably thought some rock and roll stuff was going down. <laughs> Certainly not. Austin's face was a balloon, yeah. and uh, <laughs> it was. We were very worried about him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the next night in Portland. What happened then? What happened oh, yeah. the next night in Portland? And then in Portland, luckily we had one night off, and it was in Portland. And uh, I get a, a full-on fever from the abscess tooth. So then we go to em- several emergency rooms at, I don't know, one in the morning or so. And shout uh, out to our, our healthcare professionals. We have friends yes. who, who have chosen not to pursue music careers that are doctors. Fools. Dentists. Yes. <laughs> what, which does make tours special because when you have those friends spread across the country, you can find and rely on a friend in one of these yes. cities to help you out. And a ship in every harbor, by, a doctor in every <laughs> city. By pure luck, one of Garrett's very close friends is a dentist in Portland. So at middle of the night, we called her up. Caroline literally saved my life. She got me an appointment for like five in the morning, drove in. They did some gnarly stuff to my mouth to help with the abscess tooth. And it literally, the pain went away instantly. It was insane. And uh, you, you played the show. And then I played the show that night. On didn't, a didn't lot of painkillers. Trooper. Of, yeah, it was awesome. So here's the moral. <laughs> so the moral of this story is if you play music long enough, all your friends will be doctors someday, <laughs> exactly. and they can help you uh, so, when your teeth fall well, out. Well, how do you, how do you do music without the health insurance? 
Oh, you just friends. make friends who are doctors. <laughs> friends that are doing better than we are. That's and that's, that's why we love the country we live in. Exactly. That's the only health care we need. Exactly. Friends, man. That yeah, was uh, speaking of health care, I did add up my bill from that tour and it was about almost three thousand dollars I spent on random <laughs> dentists oh and gosh. pills over the course of three weeks. So. Yeah. And that is why the tour dates are a little light right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we got. We got a couple on the on the books there. If anybody happened to catch us on our just the right amount. We're flying to some of them. Yeah, that's right. If anyone happened to catch us on our December tour, we'd love to know what your impression of us was because we were we were having fun. But I can't say that it was the healthiest tour we've ever been on. All the shows were great. The like, shows they were really great. were. It was very like the shows were very fun. Like those like that hour or whatever we were playing music were were just incredible. The other twenty three <laughs> hours of those days were were not not so great. I don't. It's think. why we haven't played a show in six months. <laughs> what did you call the barricade we built? Oh, the quarantine machine. <laughs> So we uh, got a couple sick band members, and so yeah, so we, um, so yeah, so we we had some days off, so we weren't playing shows that way. We had about a week off between shows. So, uh, but while we were traveling together, we put the healthy band members at the front of the band, and we put all of our gear in the middle, <laughs> and we put the sick ones in the back. And honestly, it worked. It definitely worked. It worked. It worked. It we worked were able out to... fine for the people well, in front. Yeah. Say, <laughs> yeah. It didn't work for the people in the back. Let me tell you. It I made mean, me never want to play music. Hey, that's Hembry, though. Kid. We don't cancel shows, baby. Nobody. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, the thing is, that, yeah, we were able yeah, that to bad quarantine. Too. It wasn't COVID, people. It wasn't it was, yeah. COVID. It was, no, it was something another, far worse. It was, yeah. some, it was another terrible <laughs> illness. My my no. my memory of, of the two nights that it was peak illness for myself and for Austin was we were in Davenport, Iowa playing at the legendary Raccoon, Raccoon Motel. Motel. <laughs> had big plans the following day. We were supposed to be in Chicago, which is where Austin and I had lived for about 10 years and had a good friend group. We were so excited. Peak illness hits at Raccoon Motel. Fortunately, um, the owner, Sean, at the Raccoon Motel has an Airbnb above above the, the venue, and he graciously allowed Austin and myself to quarantine there for two and a half days in Davenport, Iowa, while you guys are hosting Bingo downstairs. <laughs> we had a wonderful time, and he kept every time I saw Sean, he'd say, I think they're goners, dude. <laughs> he was worried about you guys. But he, I, he's, I thought we were goners, too, let me tell you. Yeah, mm-hmm. Alex, what are we sipping on here tonight? Uh, this is um, uh, the finest chilled red. Uh, ooh. It's, a, oh, it's wow. an Italian. Okay. It's an Italian. Can't, can't pronounce oh. the name. That's great. You it's know an it's Italian. Good, you can't say the name. Red. It's a dry red wine. Product of Italy. Hey, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. We are hey. premiering tonight. Is our uh, obviously our first episode. We are going to be doing cocktail of the day from here on out. And tonight we didn't quite have the uh, <laughs> the ingredients to make a proper cocktail, so we went with wine of the day. Cocktail. Uh, it is Monte Pulciano. Monte D'Abruzzo. D'Abruzzo. Incredible. Eric, you lived in Italy, correct? <laughs> yeah, I, I studied abroad in Italy for a semester. That counts. So I honestly, the beautiful language, beautiful country, but really the only thing I've gotten out of it is I can like pronounce food at restaurants. That's great, though. I really wish, I, I live in Los Angeles, I really wish I would have learned Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But no, Italy was a yeah, beautiful country, beautiful language, um, great experience. But yeah, it doesn't, doesn't come in handy too much, unfortunately. Are there Panera breads in Italy? Oh, everywhere. Every corner. In Olive Gardens, I'm assuming. Oh, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> there everywhere. was a Panera Bread. You can't, you can't, you can't throw an arancini or not without hitting one. <laughs> one of the great social, failed social experiments of our time was the um, pay which can Panera Bread I in St. Louis. Were going there. Oh, that, baby. That we took advantage of heavily when we were on tour where literally it was uh, you go in and you pay what you can, the expectation being that perhaps you'll volunteer to work in the kitchen or bus tables or something for a couple hours in the afternoon. And uh, we did not, we did not do any of those things. But we would go monsters, and, uh, Noise FM. You guys was, were, you guys were monsters. This was peak broke touring, as we've all been through in our in our band career. And we would just go to town, ordering everything on the menu, and then walking out in shame, guilt, guilt. You know, two you pick two as a person. Yeah, we pick four, and then we would leave knowing full well that we just took advantage of the system. It's no longer in effect. It's, it's so closed. strange how they get rid of those things. You know. Those free meal plans. Yeah. Here, yeah, I love how we've subbed out Garrett for uh, for Austin. All right, let's, let's get oh, yeah, let's, oh, that's Austin, right. do you have yeah, anything? Yeah. You, you, on, were there. you were there, Austin. Oh, I can't talk until Garrett's... There, he's off. Oh, hey, Sorry yeah, about that. Is. Back. He's back. Garrett, he's back. Garrett uh, has, has departed. Well, I was going to say, we took advantage of that Panera Bread system because it was also built for us. It we was built for touring Very, bands. very broke. We, we weren't not giving the money that we had. We were not giving the money that we didn't have, so... 
it was perfect for a band at that at that time. Bring it back, you Panera. Know, and I would argue that Panera has done okay for themselves, and they're not necessarily hurting for that money. No, and Panera uh, is one of our go-tos on tour. We do like a good Panera. Their portions... It hasn't been as good. It's been an inverse correlation. The portions have gotten smaller. The prices have gone up. It's been an interesting thing to see over the last few years. Let's talk a little bit about what happened at that Chipotle, too, on that last tour. Do you guys, the saddest Chipotle of all time, do you guys remember this place? Uh, We're kind of diving into a new segment here (laughs) of tour, because when you're on the highway, uh, people understand, like, we, we live in Los Angeles, we go to cities, and we have amazing food, but sometimes when you are on the highway... Those are, like, by far your best options. The best options on tour, when you are in the middle of, like, the country, and it's, a, you know, your best bet is a Starbucks for coffee. It's mm-hmm. consistent, A at Chipotle, least. a Panera. Not, not anymore, though. Well, we're gonna get right. into there, that. We, we hit the anomaly on that Ch- one Chipotle wild Chipotle. Was a was just a total standard for uh, years it was a gold and standard years of touring. and it's it's kind of it's kind of falling off. They what never is, recovered after the uh, the, the first whole, major E. coli incident. E. Co- who would have thought E. coli takes a business down? Yeah, <laughs> it really did. <laughs> so yeah, it is really like we we always joke about it where we're like, yeah, Panera is kind of like sometimes when you're on the highway where Panera really does feel like a five star restaurant for you. Uh, better better shout out Chili's. Yes, we should. That yeah. has become our favorite. Un, non unironically, that is our favorite spot. When you've been touring, spot. anyone who's been touring for you know as long as we have, everyone who reaches the same Their whole lives. They reach the same conclusion, and if, when it comes to chain restaurants, the gold standard is a hundred percent chilies. One hundred percent chilies. That's our next podcast. Oh, oh our next what? Rest- what? No, be the food it's a episode. spinoff. It's a yeah, spinoff. Yeah. Just for chilies. Sure. Yeah, join us afterwards when we're gonna we're gonna go and do that, where we can just talk about chili menus, items, we and our drinks. Get to give help. a slight insight as to why we do like chilies. Because when we roll into a city, we do prefer a local cuisine, mm-hmm. a local restaurant. But again, when you're touring and you roll into a city at 10 p.m. sometimes, we, and usually we, you ho- get a hotel in a suburb. Suburb, that's outskirt. where I was going, yeah. So usually you are on the outskirts ne- uh, of a major city. You're not like in the heart of it when you're staying. So if you have an off night and you can find a Chili's in a suburb at 9 p.m. when you roll in, Life hacks. it's the best. You get yourself a nice cold beer. You get yourself whatever chicken dish you <laughs> They serve chicken, chicken so fajita. many different ways. Chicken crispers. Chicken, chicken, yep. crisper, chicken, chicken sandwich. Chicken sandwich. Chicken on your salad, whatever it is, it's surprisingly very satisfying. It's versatile. We'll meat. be talking to Chili's when we're on the road. Oh, when yeah. we're, we're hitting the road, yeah, June, we'll be we'll be June talking. I yeah, we'll we be could, we'll be there. Someone we'll said be there. do an episode from Chili's, and I, I think oh, we got to arrange will. that. We've we've got a deep uh, connection with the Chili's crew. We so, we message on social media. Uh, we released a music video for a song with our friend Morgan, and Chili's actually threw down and sent people gift cards because Chili's is actually in the music video. And the last album thing, release show at Chili's. Oh, that we would be have beyond we have epic. <laughs> that reminded me of when our friend Steven Shireman uh, created a Facebook event when people our age were on Facebook before it became for your MAGA uncle. Um, created a Facebook event called Avril Lavigne at Winstead's and thousands of people bought it. I guess Winstead's was getting calls in Kansas City if Avril was really going to play. I remember that fad where people would post that like Creed's playing the Walmart parking lot on Friday and and, and all these people would legitimately show up. Uh, Do you remember um, around that same time there was a competition to have Pitbull (laughs) play anywhere in the world you had to, oh, yeah. Yeah. had to vote oh, on it mr worldwide mr worldwide and they sent him enough people wrote in sent him to alaska wasn't it yeah and he had to play and at walmart play. in alaska <laughs> like nobody there like <laughs> knew it was happening it's not before we move on from artists performing in alaska vh1 used to do that where they would take an mm-hmm. artist they would take a band and they would send them to a location and like they music would, in uh yeah. high places i think it, I don't something like that well that's a garth brooks song but there was, uh, my Music favorite was they, they sent the, the Goo Goo Dolls to Alaska. And there's this amazing shot I'll never forget of the singer of Goo Goo Dolls. Sorry, Johnny I don't, I don't Resnick. His name. Johnny Resnick. And he's performing, a, you know, Black Balloon on this tiny you sound just little, like him, dude. Gl- like a little chunk of ice, like a little tiny glacier in the <laughs> middle of the water. And they put him out there and he's got like his, je- his tight jeans and his, you know, his boots on. And his hair's all His hair is all done up and he's performing Baby Back Balloon. <laughs> Baby Back Ribs. <laughs> Baby Back Ribs. 
and he uh, slips and starts sliding into the water. And they left it in the episode, and he's like falling into the water, and his boots, his nice probably two thousand dollar boots, get in the water, and he's freaking the fuck out. <laughs> and I remember as a viewer being like, "This is awesome. This is rock and roll. It's probably the most rock and roll thing the Goo Goo Dolls ever did. Oh, hundred percent. That's that's, that's they're one of those weird yeah. bands. Uh oh, we've gone Goo Goo. Yeah, we've Goo Gooed ourselves. We've Here we go. Ourselves and, uh, so we need to make an audio thing. Yeah, we've gooed ourselves. Yeah, we've gooed ourselves yet again. <laughs> this should be a recurring yeah, segment. Recurring yeah, recurring theme. Uh, we goo goo yourself. Oh, I just gooed myself here on the episode. <laughs> All right, yeah, tell us and, your goo. Uh, I got some goo. They're one of those weird bands from the 90s, similarly to, to our friend's band, Mark McGrath's band, Sugar Ray. Mm. Oh, yeah. These bands were punk. They were rock. Smash Mouth was punk. Yeah. They were raw. They were punk. They were raw dogging. They were <laughs> raw <laughs> dogging. They were. So I didn't know our show was so explicit, but it is. But it is. Yeah. De- I think it was, no, it wasn't even their debut, but the one that had the big blow up was Name, and uh, it was the only like acoustic ballad on the record, but their other big hit off that was Long Way Down, which was a, it was a gnarly like drunken punk rock song, and then they never wrote a single thing like that again I don't after. know what happened with 90s major labels, where there was this thing where they must have been like, you know what, a, a, it's probably... This is we're talking 100% music here. It's probably Green Day, honestly, because Green Day did good riddance. Yeah. And I feel like every major label was like acoustic guitar, but punk yeah. is the move, right? So then all of a sudden you have all these bands that used to be punk rock, but I guess they probably also realized they could make so much more money if their songs were pop and catchy. And um, well, that's like how every kind of like genre of music yeah. starts. Is it always, and then it just kind of it gets overdone, and that's yes. when it kind of gets kind of silly and kind of funny and kind of a joke. Because mm. like when those things were happening, those were there was not anything funny about it or anything joke. Like it was awesome. Yeah, no, it was, it was fresh. Iris, and it sounded really, yeah, it sounded like Iris, yeah, really new. Iris and, crushes. Iris yeah. is a great song. Uh, the string arrangement. Good stuff. I love a lot of those bands were doing like rock acoustic songs with epic strings epic in the background. Strings. Well, love that stuff. Uh, good news for us guys. They're playing the Hollywood Bowl, maybe. <laughs> oh, well, it might be the Greek. We're gonna I go should, goo I, ourselves. We're gonna goo our, <laughs> our, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna goo ourselves. We're gonna goo at the Greek. Goo it. Let's, uh, oh, that was the name of that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Gooing at the Greek. Let's let's ask our uh, Twitch fans if they, everyone donates five bucks, we can get four tickets. To Goo Goo Dolls, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever venues they're five bucks. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) if we raise, you know, fifty bucks, one of us could go. One of, one, of us us send one of us down. Yeah, and send like do like a little like field report from yeah. the show. Yeah, we'll, Twitch, Twitch oh yeah, we'll send you on location. Yeah. yeah. Hey guys, it's going. Eric from Hembry up down That'll here. Be a, I'm we'll, not the one who's going. <laughs> we'll go. It's not going to be. But we me. all got to go. And we'll do, it'll be a it'll be a live it'll be a goose stream. <laughs> a live goose stream. <laughs> live goose stream. It's uh, going to be someone with the last name Ward. Well, I can I, guarantee I you that. Guarantee you that. And that that also leads me to future guests of the of the podcast, Zach Pugh. Great comedian, Los Angeles legend. Um, he has convinced all of us to hit up DMB this summer. We're going to go to mm. catch Dave Matthews' band. Oh, Alex is not a feeling tough one. it. No, no, no. I'm, down for, I'm always down for a good time. All right, so if Alex. Zach, if he gives, us, gives me a free ticket, I'll go. Oh, no, he's not buying. <laughs> <laughs> but our Twitch fans are. <laughs> then I'll meet you at Goo Goo Dolls. Yeah, <laughs> That's what I'm going to start saying before I leave, you know, anytime. Meet you at Goo Goo Dolls. Yeah, see, see, Goo, see you at Goo Goo Dolls. <laughs> we like can it. all go to a different show. We can do an episode about it, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We can all like compare our, our experiences. Like someone can go Goo Goo Dolls, someone go Dave Matthews. Matchbox Twenty is playing oh. at uh at at Hollywood Bowl. That, I'm Damn. in for that. I would go to that. Did Dang, you, they're still doing good for that. They're back. Good they're for actually, that. They're putting out a new album. They're like back. We oh, yeah. perhaps play a new song and let people actually know what the new I was, album is yeah, going to sound like. Yeah, this is a great idea. I think yeah, a great yeah. transition would maybe be the uh, record of the week. Would yep. be a nice blend. Oh, wait, record the of new... the week before? Okay, yeah, this is going to be a system Yeah, let's talk about that. That's a good okay. idea. Put it, put it down. One second. Okay, uh, let me let me cue this. Let me cue this. You blew it. Alex spent a lot of time on some nice music cues. Well, none of it's worked yet. (laughs) Here it comes. Here it comes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna flip over to the. In the the episode one, you're seeing behind the scenes. Working. This will not. This will not happen in future episodes. We will not address the technical difficulties that we've been having. Here we go. Did we do it? I think it worked. Did it work? Yeah, it's record of the know. week. It's, it's record, record, record of the it's week, record y'all. Of the week. It's record of the week. This week's record of the week is Outlandos de Amor by The Police. 
If you guys haven't seen it, I wear a police shirt on stage a lot. The rock band, that's an important clarification. Mm -hmm. uh, great, great band. And uh, one of my all-time faves, honestly. So record of the week um, is then this, this is their debut record. With Sting the Wrestler. With Sting the Wrestler. <laughs> Sting the wrestler, <laughs> and and all the officers <laughs> in, of in LAPD and the, the, the cops <laughs> behind him. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm gonna put this record back down again. It's record of the week here. Uh, um, debut record. You're gonna have a hard time finding a better debut, in my opinion. And the reason that I like it so much is that it's um, it's very raw. Truly, if you listen to this thing, it's straight up. It's the band playing the songs. There's not a lot of overdubs, at least uh, to my ears. And I just find it to be the magic that is a band when each person is doing their individual thing and bringing uh, their kind of unique take to music. And I, I'm just going to recite a few on the track list, and you tell me if you agree. Right out of the gates, next to you. In my opinion, the best opening song of any album. I I it's think you're right. Banging super opener. Super fast. It's loose. The tempo fluctuates slightly throughout, which makes it so, you know, energized. Sorry, not to steal your thunder. No, no, no. I this is this an open forum. Too. I love this album so much. I would say also it's amazing that it's produced by the police. Yeah. So, again, I think you're getting just what the band is. They go into track two, So Lonely. Mm. Wow, you think, wow, this band's pretty good. Two for two. Oh, we're going to jump to track three, which is Roxanne. Mama mia. Life ne changing. Never heard Sorry. it. Never heard it. <laughs> yeah, life, I'm familiar with that one. Un you guys are going to mm -hmm. love it when you hear it. Life changing song. Fun fact uh, my dad and his band, my parents are musicians back in the 80s, they were playing a venue. And the day after the police played the venue, which was the Riot Room in Kansas City, prior to that, it was the Hurricane. Yeah. Uh, the sound guy said, hey, the, this band from the UK called The Police just came through. They're amazing. There was nobody here. And then a few weeks later, Roxanne. Boom. Everywhere. How cool is that? Anyway, you work your way through the record. You get to side two. Can't stand losing you. What It's side two. Wait, what a start. Then we get Truth Hits Everybody, another one of my faves. And then the record kind of takes... I, I've been thinking a lot about this song called Born in the 50s. I love that song. It's a great song. And it's the equivalent of we made a song called Born in the 90s, <laughs> present day. Uh, but it's cool because it's, it's kind of like a, a song for the youth, in a sense. Maybe um, the police is my generation or something like that. But it's cool because it's, uh, they're, they're breaking the mold of their parents and they, they don't stand for, you know, they, 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 won't, they won't stand so close to. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's it. That's pretty much it. I feel like this is such a good segment right now because we were asked, what does the new album sound mm -hmm. like? And The Police is a, such a big influence on us. And really, yep. for this album, I think we took a lot of inspiration from not just The Police, but from a lot of bands of that era, like uh, Dire Straits. Yes. We talk about uh, The Eagles. Um, Bruce. Bruce. Yeah, like, I feel Tom like we... we We really... Because we feel like on the last album, we took a lot of influence like like from, like, Talking Heads and, lot of, like, more, like, Groove and stuff like that. And this time, we kind of really went with those kind of, like, really classic... Like, I think we really wanted to go for a really classic sound. And what's more classic than The Police? What's yeah. more classic than The Police? Just simple, just great songwriting, just really clean production. Yeah, and I think that's when, an hour ago, when someone said, um, what's the band sound like or what's the album sound like? I think we are making a band record, and that might sound confusing to people, but it just means that we're actually all working on it together. The last album, obviously, was in the heart of the pandemic, so it was like sending files back and forth and all of that. Now we're in the same space and really getting to be a band and we're, we're having we're having i i kind of think more fun than we've ever had yeah um so if yeah it, should our we, uh, motto for the record is so far been if it feels good do it <laughs> exactly and, that's and that only of, refers to music does this mean that this. eric is just going to play pads on a juno Ooh. 106 oh wow this is deep <laughs> wait who's a wow to be I honest we're we're kind of figuring out the arrangements everybody yeah. and this is a great this is very exciting we, yeah. we have another song that i won't reveal too much about but uh there, Isaac, there eric is a lot of juno 106 it. yeah there is yep. uh, but for example like eric on stage generally is playing keyboard uh when we were writing a song the other day eric was playing bass on it and guitar we all we all three played guitar yeah. on yeah. one song uh so it's just kind of like whoever's in the studio and has an idea and they want to play it it goes on the record if it works and then we're gonna have to figure out how to perform this live 
Yeah, very and, soon like, yeah and isaac I mean, isaac plays a lot of uh, he has a juno and so a lot of the juno sounds are actually isaac when that is i use a prophet for my uh, as, a, as an analog synth so a lot of my sounds are from the prophet a so lot actually of, and his yeah. are from the from the juno um but it is cool about a, being a band like this where we all can we can all move around and play different instruments and uh, bragging over yeah. there. <laughs> well, yeah, that is just a. And uh, it's, but that's a fun thing. It's not like good, like, oh, I'm the keyboard player. I only play keyboard, yeah. or like, yeah. you know, like I, I play. I'll be playing some guitar, or some bass. Uh, Austin's a great bass player um, too, and that's just really fun to be able to move around and not be stuck on your instrument necessarily. And it's just, it's just a lot of fun to be in the studio and to be able to um, like have like the trust in each other to to do that and not have an ego about that at all. Yeah. Where it's just like if you have a good idea, it's it's on there, and there's nothing else that really goes into it. that's really when it feels good you do it that's really what that kind of goes down to is like no who ego cares? no yeah, ego. Like if it sounds good we don't care last record was just too too much ego so much, <laughs> ego. much ego i was i was left alone in my house and i just i just was so egotistical about how how it was sounding and got a band thread and everyone's on it but him we're just like, oh, oh, I can't stand. it's called the it's called the no, e the no ego thread that we no, e going no ego henry <laughs> I know it's crazy. They keep saying, "Hey, you got your own hotel room." And at first, I thought they were being nice, but now it's just it's lonely, and they're so lonely, so lonely, <laughs> so lonely. We he has his own table at Chili's. Yeah, we, the rest of the band sits. They on our bring own, me yeah. my own crispers. <laughs> there was Bottomless a uh, chips and salsa. Not not to derail us too <laughs> far before we debut the music, but the <laughs> legendary Chicago venue called the Double Door in Wicker Park now now gone. Sadly, uh, used to host an annual Halloween show where they would have bands from Chicago and beyond come in and cover a band for the night. It was like you would dress up as the band, perform the sets. Ooh, I'd love to do that. It someday. was so fun. And uh, the Noise Austin and I's previous uh, other band, the Noise FM, performed as the Police one year. We invited some friends along, and we thought it'd be extra funny if. Some of us dressed up as cops, and some people were dressed as Sting the Wrestler, <laughs> Sting from Dune, just a spectrum of different, anything every, but the every police. Every form of Sting. Um, come to find out, Double Door didn't think that was funny. They wanted us to dress up as the band. It's a very like authentic cover band experience. So the following year, we were invited back to perform, and uh, they just said, uh, one stipulation, we'd really like it if you guys dressed up as the actual band that you're performing as this year. <laughs> Which was LCD sound systems. We're like, well, oh, right. we're just wearing pants and a shirt. <laughs> yeah. like, that's not exciting. Okay, we are going to debut a brand new song. I would say somewhat influenced by the police. So you'll hear it. There's no there's no hiding it, but uh, you get up in that sting zone. If it feels good. If it feels good, do. Okay, here we go, uh, ladies this and one, gentlemen. Yeah, this Tell one, us what's the yeah, name of it. Set us up for a little bit here. Okay, this, so this is a brand new tune called ATM. If you're here on the Twitch, you're going to hear it. It'll be out next month. We're pretty thrilled with it. It's uh, it's right in the, the wheelhouse of the, the bands Eric was describing, and uh, but with our own little Hembry twist on it. We feel like it's like a really good um, first song to put out because it's, I think it really captures really well like what the whole album, yeah. what we're kind of going for here. Yeah, we're thrilled about it. I hope you, hope you Twitch folks love it. Here we go. We're back, baby. Well, that was the p world premiere. Yes. I don't even know if we cleared it with our manager or anything. We just <laughs> threw this thing up. We're crazy. We're cr that's that's what, how we roll in Hembry. We do what we want. Stuck the landing. Uh, that was the also, should clarify, not that it makes a huge difference, but it does. That was unmastered. That's, that was hot off the press. Isaac bounced that sucker down yesterday. Right off the vine. Right off Straight the vine. Straight from my computer. Great ATM. solo at the end. I but, like that. Very yeah, direct DI you sound. Yes, yeah. Uh, and that's that song's bopping, boys. Let me tell you. Yeah, Thank a you. That's a shout out to uh, the folks at JH, JHS Pedals. That's right. I could hardly say it. JHS. Uh, yes, we were using the color box. JHS Pedals, mm. color box, all over that. Yep, absolutely. So that is uh, the color box on that guitar solo. And that's how it has that clean tone, but just with a little yeah, bit a little of grit. little grit. Just the touch of the grit. The and uh, so we were really thrilled when they asked us to be JHS artists because we love their stuff. And honestly, we've been wanting to get our hands on a color box for a long time. We should have purchased one. We just held out for years to become endorsed. We were waiting, could you, we were waiting could you imagine Royalties. where we would be at right now, the band, if we would have been using the color box from yeah, day one? Yeah, I know. We really shot ourselves in the foot by not doing that. We would have been ago. twitching years ago. Mm -hmm. But yes, we will be continuing this uh, this 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 twitching experiment. The twitching hour. Uh, 
Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah and we're nice. going to do it in the studio next yes. week. Yeah, so next week we'll be in the studio. We're going to do this once a week. Uh, so next Tuesday, same, roughly same time. Maybe even all day next Tuesday. Who knows? We will be in the studio. This is Garrett talking right now. Yeah. We will be in the studio. Uh, <laughs> and it's actually going to be, a. if you do want to chime in, it, it will be fun to see kind of the inside baseball of, you know, not only how Hembry works, but just a band in the studio. Uh, we'll be tracking drums, a lot of other instruments, and you can see the nice studio in LA studio. See what it looks like. It's nice. If you like the nice. Beatles, if you like the Beatles documentary, you're gonna love yeah. next week's we won't, episode. We won't be smoking as many cigarettes or eating as much toast or but, drinking tea. <laughs> I will be I will be slamming toast <laughs> yeah. next week. But uh, it will be fun. So do tune in. We'll probably be in and out all day, twitching in the studio on Tuesday. Did you guys ever see? This is a good way to wrap it up. I'm a real professional here. Did you guys ever see when? Dr. Pepper did Band in a Bubble with the band Cartel. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. And they had to write like a record or they had to make a record and it was all filmed and I think live early days of live stream. Um I think the band said they didn't like the experience. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how next week goes. We'll see how it goes. We really appreciate you, you tuning into the debut episode. Alex has uh, a lot of work ahead of him. He's going to edit this down into a podcast, apparently. Mm. It'll be four <laughs> yeah, minutes we'll long. <laughs> four, four minutes long. It'll be Just the song. Yeah. It'll be St. Louis, the song. We're going to really speed dolls. up. We're speeding up the audio. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll see you. See you all we'll next week. We'll see y'all at the Goo Goo Dolls concert. <laughs> it's where is it? The Greek? Not sure. We'll have to check. I we'll see. We'll see Greek. at the Goo. See at the Goo. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. tuning in, guys. We'll see you next Tuesday. Chime in. We'll be. We'll be back. One hundred percent music. Music. Music.